So anyone who follows Nintendo knows how important this upcoming E3 is for the rest of their 2021. I mean, so far Nintendo has put out some great games this year, like Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Miitopia, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, that Bravely Default game, and even Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. However, after Skyward Sword comes out in July, we really don't know anything from Nintendo coming in the rest of 2021. So while I don't think everything in this video is necessarily going to happen, I wanted to take a moment and talk about how 2021 one's E3 could be Nintendo's best E3 Direct ever. If you're just as excited for this E3 as I am, make sure to hit the subscribe button because although the channel's kind of been on a little bit of a break as of late, we're going to be hitting up a ton of new E3 related content as we head into the E3 season and just a bunch of Nintendo Switch related stuff as well. Alright, so first game I want to talk about, it's a sequel, it's one that everyone's anticipating, Mario Odyssey 2, yeah, no, we're not going to talk about Breath of the Wild 2 just yet, because I do think that Mario Odyssey 2 has a pretty good chance of being announced at this E3. I mean, think about it, this is one of the only times, like, in, in a long while, we do not know of the next 2D or 3D Mario game coming out. Now, a couple of things I want to see in an Odyssey 2. I want to see more classic enemy captures. Mario Odyssey had a ton of incredibly amazing and, like, creative creatures, like the little onion uproot things in Wooded Kingdom, or a bunch of stuff like that. But by far, my favorite captures were the classic Mario enemies. Like, capturing a Bullet Bill or a Goomba is just so cool because we've known those, you know, characters for years and years and years now. Imagine being able to capture a Koopa Troopa and hop into their shell, kind of like you can in Super Mario 3D World. Or capturing a Boo. Like, can you believe there were no Boo? in Mario Odyssey, that's kind of weird. On top of that, I'd love to see some sort of Super Mario Sunshine Kingdom tease because we all know that Sunshine was supposed to be in Mario Odyssey, then it either got pushed back or maybe they were just teasing it, I don't know. But Isle Delfino has to happen. And I also want to see some new hat mechanics because, you know, the hat mechanics were so sick in Odyssey, but maybe just one or two wrinkles will really uh, make the game truly feel like a sequel and rather than just more Mario Odyssey, kind of like how Galaxy 2 just felt like more Mario Galaxy. Now hopping into the other sequel that we probably know is basically confirmed to be at E3, Breath of the Wild 2. We didn't get any news about it earlier because Aonuma said there would be more news later this year, so it makes sense to assume that it will be at this E3. Now, there's really only a couple things I want to see here. I want to see a darker story, and we already got this hinted in the announcement trailer. Some sort of dark story that is actually, like, engaging, because Breath of the Wild 1's story was not that good. I mean, it didn't really matter because the open world was just, like, bonkers, ridiculous, amazing, but, I mean, the story was kind of bad, so I, I would like a better story in the sequel. On top of that, any form of co-op would be so sick. I I'm pretty sure this has been like hinted at by Aonuma. A lot of people think he'll be able to play as both Link and Zelda because, you know, in that announcement trailer they were together. I don't know if that's going to happen, but any type of multiplayer would just make this probably my dream game. On top of that, I would love to see a release date, uh, hopefully for like later this year. And then last but not least, my friend actually suggested this. Where's the hookshot? Like imagine grappling around this giant open world of Hyrule. That would be so, so sick. The hookshot's one of the coolest parts of 3D Zelda, and I honestly didn't even realize it was missing from Breath of the Wild. But once my friend said it, like, I, I mean, come on, the hookshot's gotta be in Breath of the Wild 2, that would be so sick. Speaking of Breath of the Wild 2, I think that that is going to be one of the flagship titles to push the Nintendo Switch Pro, and that's another thing I hope they announce at this E3. Typically, Nintendo does not announce hardware during these E3 Directs, however, I think, you know, this is kind of more of a the best E3 ever, so I kind of want to see a Nintendo Switch Pro. My dream Switch Pro would be $400, have a 4K dock, and have new third-party Switch games, but all first-party Nintendo games would be backwards compatible. Basically, what I mean from that is like Breath of the Wild 2 would look and run a lot better on the Switch Pro, but you could still play it on the normal Switch because obviously so many people have the normal Switch, so it would be kind of weird to for them to make it like, you know, pro exclusive. But then some third party games that just would not be possible on the normal Switch should get, you know, Switch Pro versions and, you know, they don't really have to have normal Switch versions. I don't know, I just think that's a fair way to, you know, give the Switch Pro users like a lot of, you know, their exclusive content, but it doesn't leave the normal Switch users in the dust. There have been rumors about this too, I'll put one of them up on the screen right now. Now, I honestly do think this is going to happen, so I'm pretty excited for that. The Switch Pro is obviously an insanely big topic. There's so much to talk about here, and we're actually making a giant Switch Pro related video, so make sure you subscribe to hear all our thoughts on that, because we have some pretty interesting ideas that I haven't really seen anyone talk about. Next up, this is Pokemon's 25th anniversary, so I want to take a moment to talk about the three, well, kind of two, Pokemon games we know of that are coming later this year and early next year. Those being the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes and Pokemon Legends Arceus. For the Diamond and Pearl remakes, I just want some new story content, 
and differences between Diamond and Pearl. I actually thought the remakes looked good. I kind of like the art style. My one problem is I've already played Diamond and Pearl. My favorite remakes are like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where they have a ton of new content, new features, stuff like Mega Evolutions, and then you got like the Delta episode, which is a whole like post-game thing that just wasn't in the original games. Add stuff like that to Diamond and Pearl. Something interesting is that we've never seen the legendaries in these Diamond and Pearl remakes, so maybe there's like Mega Evolution versions of Dialga and Palkia, like we don't know that yet, so that's definitely possible. So fingers crossed that there is some sort of difference, and obviously I also want, you know, a release date because it's coming later this year, so we're gonna get a release date no matter what. Next up, the Pokemon game I'm more excited for, Pokemon Legends Arceus. All I want here is just to clarify the gameplay mechanics. I mean, this seems to be a very, very interesting spin-off of the Pokemon franchise. However, the original trailer was intentionally very vague. We're not necessarily sure if it's real-time battlings or turn-based. We don't really know, you know, the entirety of the catching mechanics. We saw some real-time captures where you just kind of walk up and throw, but you're not really sure if there's, like, wild Pokemon battles. There's just so much we don't really know, so I want to kind of see the identity. Like, what is this new Pokemon Legends, I guess, sub-series, because if Arceus does really well, then maybe we could get, like, Pokemon Legends, like, Rayquaza or something like that. That would be so sick, so I'm just curious what this series kind of has in store for us. Last but not least, I'd like to see some better frame rates and graphics, like, I mean, you know, and graphics aren't everything, naturally, everyone knows this, but if Pokemon is coming out with, like, a brand new series, and it's, you know, looking to not get hated instantly, I mean, like, you know, everyone kind of picks on Pokemon for looking kind of trash, because, I mean, it doesn't really look the best, so so having better frame rates for like the wild Pokemon and, and just nicer textures and all that stuff would be definitely nice to see. New Pokemon Snap is actually a great example of a Pokemon game that looks really, really well. And naturally that was developed by Bandai Namco and not Game Freak, but maybe they could get some of Bandai Namco's assets or uh, they could just ask them to help out a little bit because, I mean, Game Freak clearly doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to, you know, graphics on their Nintendo Switch games. So I don't know. I think take some of that new Pokemon Snap inspiration because that stuff looked really good. So the last games I want to talk about are pretty similar, but also extremely different at the same time. I'm talking about a brand new Donkey Kong game and a brand new Kirby game. Now, both of these franchises are known for their 2D entries. They've had both, like, semi-3D entries. I mean, obviously, you have Donkey Kong 64, which is a, you know, a fully-fledged 3D game, and Kirby has had some slight forays into 3D, but both of them really need a big 3D platformer. I mean, we haven't gotten, you know, a Donkey Kong game in forever since Tropical Freeze, and Kirby Star Allies was uh, kind of mildly received by a lot of fans, so I think both a new 3D Kirby game and a new 3D Donkey Kong game announced to both at this E3 would just be absolutely huge. Like, that would be so cool, and it would be a great way for both of those franchises to kind of get a, a boost up, I guess. So that about rounds it out. I mean, naturally, there's going to be a lot of third-party stuff and probably some other first-party things. Maybe that Super Mario Party DLC I just made a whole video about. But those are the big games that I think if Nintendo shows off, I mean, this would be one of, if not the best, Nintendo E3 ever. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, though, and if you made it this far, like the video and subscribe if you're new. As I said at the start, we got a lot more videos coming out for E3, so make sure to be looking forward to those. And with that all out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Thomas from the Switch Stop, signing off. Peace.